the early days of military history, refuse disposal was no problem. The troops were always on the move and just dropped rubbish where they happened to be. Or threw it out in front of the barracks. But as time passed, armies grew larger. The problem got bigger and bigger and more complex until today, the tab for armed forces refuse disposal runs into millions of dollars annually. Here's why. Not only are we faced with refuse from regular sources, such as administration buildings, quarters, mess halls, warehouses, BX and post exchanges, but also because a large percentage of our peacetime personnel consists of family men. We are now faced with gigantic refuse accumulations from the temporary and permanent housing areas that already exist and are being built all over the country and abroad. Yes, this is a multi-million dollar headache that will grow bigger with every passing day. Where do the millions go? First, for maintenance and operation of disposal areas such as landfills or incinerators. Second, the lion's share of the money goes for the manpower required to collect and load refuse into trucks. Third, cost of truck equipment and the expense of transporting the waste to disposal areas. But in addition to the expense, there is another big problem called temporary waste storage. To maintain good base housekeeping, you have to provide temporary storage for refuse. Tenants, of course, have different ideas of storage. Some prefer cans, some prefer boxes. And when they're full, some have to throw it on the ground. Now dogs and cats seem to prefer the cans. Rats like cans too, but boxes are their real thing. While flies don't care how you store it as long as it's open. So really this is not too bad a system, as long as you don't uh, get too close to it. This brings us to three big areas for improvement. First, storing refuse. Second, collecting it. Third, transporting it to the disposal area. The storage problem is easy to beat with a clean, enclosed Dempster Dump Master container. Refuse is dumped through the end doors or the lids. Here it is fully enclosed. Flies can't get in. Ditto for rats. Wind can't scatter it. Fire is out of the question. And man's best friend is dealt a cruel blow. The second improvement area is in collection. Collecting refuse from a Dempster Dump Master container is quite different from conventional refuse collection in that one man and one dump master handle the entire job. Let's take a look at a test collection. The dump master approaches this six cubic yard container, engages the side channels with its lifting arms, and up it goes, the equivalent of over 40 trash cans, emptied in less than a minute. This leaves transporting the refuse as our third area of improvement. Being light and bulky, trash and refuse take up lots of room, and it would require a body far larger than legal size to hold enough for economical payloads. That's why the modern-day packer was developed. There are several types of compaction principles in use today. The so-called paddle packers of relatively short stroke. Then, short stroke, straight thrust packers and full-stroke straight thrust packers. Using this packer model, we demonstrate the difference in short-stroke packing and long-stroke packing. To simulate refuse, we used popcorn, which is both elastic and bulky.
The short stroke has compacted almost to maximum efficiency. But it is pushing against all this springy bulk. Note here in the center, the material is not tightly compressed. Now let's look at the Dumpmaster long stroke principle. As each charge is dumped into the hopper, it is carried to the rear and tightly compacted to form a good solid base for the next load. Each load is tightly packed until the body is full. Compaction is tight and solid because the packer plate did not have to push against the entire uncompacted mass. Same material, same model, same force. But 67% more material compacted by weight, by volume, with the Dempster Dumpmaster long stroke principle, which is the way to achieve a maximum payload that all operators pay for, but don't always receive. The Dumpmaster Packer Plate has a compression force of 60,000 pounds, supplied by a powerful five-stage hydraulic cylinder. This powerful compression enables the Dempster Dumpmaster, depending on the material's density, to haul from 72 to 100 cubic yards of loose refuse on each trip to the disposal area. Here's a view of a load being dumped at the Camp Lejeune disposal area. The driver has unlatched the rear door and is clearing the body with the packer plate. So, we see the three big advantages of the Dempster Dumpmaster system. Sanitary enclosed temporary storage. Fast economical collection. And big payloads for economical hauling. Now, let's take a closer look at the Dempster Dumpmaster. It comes with three size bodies, 18 cubic yard capacity called the 18DB, which holds up to 72 cubic yards of loose bulky material, 24 cubic yard, the 24DB, which holds up to 100 cubic yards of uncompacted refuse, and the 30 cubic yard model called the 30DB, which holds up to 120 cubic yards of refuse. The capacity of all bodies depends upon the density of the loose material. The clearance arms come in three lifting capacities, 1,500 pounds called CA-15, 3,000 pounds, the CA-30, and 6,000 pounds, the CA-60. The CA-15 18DB handles one half through three cubic yard containers, while the CA-30 24DB and the CA-60 30DB handle one half through eight cubic yard containers. For special situations, any set of lifting arms may be used with any body size. On the dump master, the lifting clearance arms, rather than being straight, bridge the cab. An important safety feature, no chance of striking the operator's head or arm. And cab doors may be opened at any arm position, permitting the driver to dismount if necessary, to operate outside controls and move containers to the arms. This speeds operations at locations where inside containers are used. Inside controls are simple and easy to handle. To increase capacity of the body and meet sanitation requirements, an automatic hopper cover is provided. An extra for use in windy areas are the movable hopper extensions. Made of heavy wire grill, they move into position with the arms and prevent light paper from blowing out during dumping operations. Another optional feature is a pressure tank for water or deodorant. This permits easy cleaning of containers used for garbage storage. Yes, the Dempster Dumpmaster has many features that give it the flexibility necessary to meet the complex requirements of armed service bases. For instance, the containers, which range from one-half cubic yard capacity up to eight cubic yards. This variety enables base operators to choose the right container for the right job. Here are the three big collection jobs a refuse system must provide for an armed service base. Housing, administrative and service operations, 
and manual collection service. First, let's look at housing. Since a one cubic yard container provides storage equal to six and three quarter standard 30 gallon GI cans, and a two cubic yard container the equivalent of 13 and a half cans, the proper size container can be purchased to meet the type of dwelling unit involved. For example, one two cubic yard container can serve four families in duplex houses or eight families in four unit apartment type dwellings without imposing a walk of over 20 paces on the most distant tenant, far less than the 300 feet allowed by the AFR and distances specified by other service regulations. And very few wives object to the once a day walk, less than the length of the building, when they consider the many advantages of sanitary and closed refuse storage. Now let's look at a typical base dwelling area to compare the dump master system with conventional trash can refuse handling. First, we will need approximately 4,400 trash cans and lids at an initial cost of $32,000. Replacement costs run an average of $16,000 annually. To serve these 4,400 trash cans, we require, under ideal circumstances, two packer trucks and six men. However, with the Dempster Dumpmaster system, the same dwelling area is served by only 336 containers, which are placed at strategic locations, with each serving several families. And with the 10-year life of this type of container, thousands of dollars are saved annually in replacement costs. Additionally, thanks to its mechanized one-man operation and bigger payloads, only one dump master and one man is required to handle collection for the entire area, freeing several men to handle other productive work. With labor savings on this item alone amounting to $67,622 in only five years of the equipment's normal 10-year life. But let's look at an existing installation. This is a segment of the well-known Tarara Court housing installation at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. The maintenance department of this famous marine base has placed containers within easy reach of each dwelling unit. Altogether, 225 containers serve the residents of this model area, where 2,108 Marine Corps families are housed in comfortable, modern quarters. Here are just a few of the many locations served. This container serves many families who are only a short walk away. And when the containers are filled, the dump master automatically picks up each container and empties its contents. Container after container is quickly emptied as the operator makes his round. In another section of Camp Lejeune, the trailer area, thousands of tenants are served. The dogs are the only tenants who don't appreciate this service. <laughs> I'm sorry, boys, no trash scattering today. The dump master has beaten you to it. Here's an installation at an army base where two yard containers are placed in the rear of permanent officers' quarters. The dump master system is so versatile that containers in the form of benches may be used for litter and trash in housing areas. Another type of housing, barracks areas, are served by the dump master. Here is a typical view taken at an Eastern Army post. Note that the dump master may be operated in inclement weather. The driver performs all functions from the comfort and safety of his cab. The 
second area of operations is in administrative and service where big volumes of refuse must be handled. Yes, administrative buildings, cafeterias, commissaries, maintenance shops, warehouses, post and base exchanges must be served. And to meet this larger need, larger containers are available. This on-base filling station and the post shopping area behind it are all served by the dump master. Here's an army post exchange which generates many yards of refuse daily. Warehousing and supply operations also generate huge quantities of waste and refuse. Here at the Army Memphis General Supply Depot, some 70 containers are in use. They are placed in groups of threes, one for paper and combustible waste, one for scrap wood and one for scrap metal. The waste paper is burned at the dump. while the wood and metal are sold to salvage concerns. Further demonstration of the flexibility of the dump master is found in manual collection operations. In some areas, manual collection of refuse is necessary, and this three-yard container is all it takes to convert the dump master for highly efficient, conventional packer truck operation. Note the low loading height and the driver's clear view of the men in front of the truck, which reduces the possibility of accidents. When the container is ready for emptying, this swinging baffle plate holds the material in place while it is lifted and dumped into the compaction body. Yes, at armed service bases from coast to coast, Fort Riley, Meade, Carson, Ritchie, Leavenworth, Sheridan, Memphis General Depot, and Frankfurt Arsenal, Camp Lejeune, Cherry Point, Bremerton Naval Base, Roosevelt Roads, and many others, efficient, low-cost refuse collection is being provided for housing areas, for service and administration areas, and hand collection routes by the Dempster Dump Master.